Ladies and gentlemen, I gladly introduce to you the engineering mistress, your porn princess, the real defender of gender equality, La Boricua Bella, Mercedes Carrera. Okay, I'm here with Mercedes Carrera live. Um, and something interesting just happened with her case, and she called me because she this needs to come out. Some uh, hi, Mercedes. How you doing? Hi, Louie. I'm well. I'm I've been better. I, I'm in West Valley Detention Center. I've been here for four and a half years, mm. more or less. Yeah, more. Well, I've I've been in San Bernardino's custody for four and a half years. Better said. Um, it's come to my attention. I had a friend look into the, the, the warrants on my case, um, because he, he was going through some of the stuff in my storage and some of the paperwork, we were cleaning it out and, uh, or I wasn't there, but he was doing it by proxy. Mm -hmm. And he noticed that the, some of the essential filing numbers on the search warrants and the arrest warrants were not correct or they were absent altogether so he went down to the courthouse to investigate mm. for me and he noticed that none of the warrants on my case were properly filed at the courthouse so he went to the courthouse and he, and he found out that there are no search warrants or arrest warrants filed on my case none so basically the detective on my case who by the way is in the jail right now acting as a sergeant and actively harassing Jason, my mm. um, mm. and I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, which I mean, seems like that should be illegal altogether. Anyway, uh, he uh, he went and he asked the, the courthouse. He and he looked, you know, under everything: my name, my address, my social security number, my uh, my birth date, right? Mm -hmm. Everything, and there's nothing listed. And evidently, this is kind of common with these detectives that kind of cowboy up and, you know, create their own documents. You know, and this is this is typical when they assume they're going to find, you know, it, this is actually Detective Patton used the term a treasure trove of evidence, right? They think they're going to find all this evidence. It's going to be a shoe in case. So they don't go through the proper procedure of uh, filing search warrants. And so, and, and my friend who did this, he actually went to, to the uh, service academy. So he knows the, the procedures. And there are no proper warrants on my case. So we start digging into this a little further. I asked my attorney about it. He is absolutely resistant to, to looking into this further. Even though it's a major constitutional issue, right? Right, right. You know, all right. Hi, back. Thank you. And, um, and, you know, it seems to me that, you know, this is a major issue. I know in Orange County, California, they, they were doing something similar. They were, there were a bunch of detectives running around creating fabricated uh, search warrants. And there were quite a few people who were convicted on these bunk search warrants. And when it was finally uncovered, quite a few people were um, released from prison. Now, my attorney currently had been a district attorney. What's your attorney's name? Uh, Jeff Newman. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I tried to bring this up to him. He was not interested. He said, you know, no, I have copies of the search warrant. And he, he said, quote, they're always a big mess. That was his direct comment on this. That, you know, that sounds a little, uh, a little strange, doesn't it? They're yeah. always a big mess. I mean, I don't think legal paperwork is holding me in what is, I think, the worst deal in Southern California mm -hmm. should be a big mess. But it sounds a little Stalinesque, doesn't it? Yeah. I've been held here for four and a half years free trial. You know, in Russia, the, the maximum you can hold someone free trial is one year. Did you know that? That's in Russia. Oh, well, in Romania, they, um, with, with, um, Andrew Tate, they, like, they had to release him after, what, uh, three months? Yeah, that's, you know, that's standard. I mean, so... Here, here, here we are in allegedly the land of the free home of the brave. I've been held for four and a half years, pre-trial, no conviction. Now, let's talk about, uh, here's, here's a phone issue. Now, I mean, I'm being dicked around about this. 
ele- they're alleging that there's child pornography on my daughter's cell phone. Now, this makes absolutely no sense. This is my daughter's cell phone. I gave it to her so I could track of her when she was at her father's house. It was in her custody when I was arrested. She was with her father. And they're claiming they can't get into the phone. Now, she should be able to get into it. It's a biometric password. It was set up with her thumbprint, my thumbprint, uh, my co-defendant thumbprint. Any one of us could get into this. Well, for whatever reason, my daughter has chosen not to give them access to it. So they, uh, which makes no sense at all. So they they claim they've put it on a on an FBI uh, uh, cracking device that cycles through paths. Why? I have no idea. This is not a, a federal case. Okay, this is the claim they've made. It sounds like a big lie. Yeah. Um, I mean, they usually reserve those for terrorist cases. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I believe it was a iPhone 10. All right. So now, allegedly, this would exonerate me. <laughs> it, I mean, it's it's. It's absolutely nonsensical. It's an absolutely nonsensical claim. Yeah. Uh, I have told them, bring me the phone, I'll open it. You know, also, I mean, look, my phone backs up to iCloud. Jason's phone backs up to iCloud. They can go into our Google files. They can see there's nothing illegal on our phones. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, no big deal. So, you know, I, I've told them, bring me the phone, I'll open it. No big deal. They refuse to do this now. They claim that... If you take it off this iPhone cracker, it, it'll be reset. You know, all the data's lost forever and ever. You know, I've questioned this multiple times. They're claiming to be experts, these nebulous experts they have. That is, that, you know, San Bernardino County is the best experts in, on the whole planet, better than the FBI, I'm told. Hmm. These are amazing experts. You know, they say that it, once once it's on there, the, the biometric won't work forever and ever. I mean, this, this is, these are the lies I'm being told. Once again, my my trial date is being set forward because even though we have reserved these attorneys multiple times, now Jason's attorney is in trial one more time. So, I mean, they're just continuing to do this. I ask about the phone. My attorney gets hostile with me. This one's about hostile about the search warrant. I mean, this is this is a big setup. They just do not want to allow us to go to trial. They won't allow us to exonerate ourselves. Um, the, the detective on the case Patton, who, by the way, owns a daycare. <laughs> hmm. If that's not you know, so, I mean, really, if someone should look into him. Let's look into his computer file. Oh, wait, that's that's right. He, he looks at health pornography for his job, right? So it's completely fine for him to do that and to own a daycare. But no, no conflict of interest there. Yeah. Um, you know, he uh, so he's now inside the jail, uh, harassing Jason. Jason is the segment barber. So they sell these little tiny dull razors on the kiosk. And Jason was barbering. He he took the, uh, the the guard off of one of these little tiny razors. And they charged Jason with a felony uh, of having a uh, a weapon while in custody. And this is Patton targeted harassment yeah. by the detective on our plate. I mean, this is like something that you read about in Soviet Russia. This is what we're enduring in here. <laughs> in America. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievable. So now Jason's, uh, you know, having to build an additional felony because he's the segment barber. These razors, I mean, they barely cut hair. Yeah. And they're like a quarter of an inch long. And, and nobody sees the problem with this. Four and a half years we've been enduring this. Oh, and, and you know, now I hear that I'm I'm being tweeted out, you know, by someone in Antifa. Well, you know, if, if they're so anti-fascism, then they would then, you know, what for the sake of 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 being just, this is fascism. This is true fascism. But we're enduring. Nobody has convicted us of a crime. This is a fascist dictatorship. This is Stalinist fascist dictatorship. So, you know, I, I mean, look, these people, and it's so easy to accuse anybody of a crime that's distasteful, throw them into jail, and let them rot for years. And what people may not like me, they may say, oh, well, what you've been accused of is disgusting. Okay, fine. But I am a canary in a coal mine. I'm a canary in a coal mine. 
So people may say whatever they may say about me, but this is the beginning. This is Soviet Russia in the 1920s, and it will get worse, not better. So God help us all. God help us all. Because people who look the other way at the persecution I'm enduring have nothing If you're to an look attorney, hang up and contact the facility to request your number be made private. Listen to that message. You know what? People have nothing to look forward to but bread lines and starvation mm. at the hands of this kind of government. Read about Russia in the 1930s, 1940s, 1950s. This is what people have to look forward to. I had a friend try the other day to get a helium for balloons. And did you know that you no longer can to get helium tanks for balloons in this country? Can't get them. Well, there is, there is a helium shortage. Yeah, it, and the fact that there's a quote-unquote helium shortage, do you think there's a helium shortage in China? Uh, no. Or, yeah. So the idea of shortages, that's a very Soviet thing. This, this that you're seeing, there's no, there's no helium shortage in the world. It's only in America. Hmm. Do you understand? Do you understand? Look, I've had four and a half years to do nothing but read. And I've read mostly history. And when you sit down and you really read history, you really start to understand the past. Sit down and read Russian history. Sit down and read Chinese history. This is what we're facing. So, you know, I mean, I know I've, I've gotten a little off track here. Yeah. But uh, this is a warning to everybody. Because the unconstitutionality of my case is just a taste of what everybody it has to look forward to. So... I, you know, I, I'm kind of at a loss. It's part of the reason I'm putting this forward because I, I have nowhere else to turn. Everybody's in on it. Judges are simply prosecutors who've been given a pay raise. There's nowhere else to go. So I'm making this information public because I have nowhere else to turn. All I can do is make this information public and hope hope that people see the injustice of this. That's all I can do. Other than that, I'm putting my my life in the hands of 12 people who very likely, very likely, will, you know, will choose to say, well, it's, it's better to throw somebody away in prison than to make the wrong decision. That's what people do. And that's terrifying. Terrifying. This is the country we have. Hmm. We have a country of, you know, knee-jerk emotional decisions. So. Yeah, and they're not getting all the information. That's, I mean, it's just, it's just like really, like frustrating. I mean, frustrating to hear. I mean, I can't imagine how it is for you. I mean. <laughs> Oh, you have no idea. You have no idea the rot of civilization that I'm surrounded by. Mm -hmm. Wait, you were telling me that you're you're incarcerated with a woman who did the uh, who did the same thing that you're yeah. accused of, and yet she's she's doing she did less time. Yes, there's a woman who actually just got sentenced. Her case is be real version of what I have been accused of. And incidentally, her name is Mercedes Smith. How about that? Mercedes what? Mercedes Smith. Oh my God. I know. Isn't that some irony? Yeah. And she was on Facebook Live uh, molesting a 10 and a 10 and a 12 year old boy. Yeah. Yeah, it's disgusting. It's a disgusting case. He's a gang member. The other adult male with her, they're, they're, they're uh, black gang members, known black gang members. And um, she is being sentenced to something like five or six years. And I think the male got eight and he's a, a prior felon. 
and she's done a year here. She's, they're giving her double time. She's going to do another year and a half, and that's it. So she'll do two and a half years for something that she actually did. I mean, and I've been accused of, uh, you know, something similar. I mean, it's just so it's so distasteful. Yeah. They have to even discuss such things. It's, it's disgusting. And um, yeah, and I'm I'm I've been held for almost the entire length of her sentence. I in toto. I mean, it, it, you know, and, and also just imagine what it's like to be held around people like this. I was asked like how was in the same cell with that woman, hmm. and she threatened to beat me. What? Okay. Yeah. For for yeah. what? I mean, I you know, it's, it's, it's just it's superfluous drama of you know the double digit IQ variety. It's not even worth discussing. But I, I mean, just imagine what it's like to have to live around people like this. Yeah. I, I you know, it, <laughs> I can't impress upon everybody enough what this is like. And what this has been like. Mm-hmm. And um, all I can say is, you know, it it's horrendous. But if everybody continues to ignore this and the slippery slope, I mean, I guess, you know, they, I mean, look, they're, they're trying to incarcerate a former president. If that doesn't remind you of a Soviet state, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> That's, you know, I, I mean, they didn't they just, they just indicted Trump, you know, I, uh, and stuff that, that happened when he was, uh, when he was president, he had every right to declassify it. He, and, uh, right. yeah, I mean, there, there's absolutely no case with that either. And it's going right. to, it's so, going to fall apart like the case did in here in New York. Yeah. I mean, read Gulag Archipelago by Solzhenitsyn. And then compare it to modern society. And like I said, I mean, I was arrested on warrants that don't exist in proper filing. I, I'm being held on on ev- oh, none of the evidence in my file was properly tagged, by the way. Hmm. <laughs> so uh, I mean, this this is this is a systemic problem in American society. Um, people are held for years. And look, I've heard about it from other people, too. I, there are people who are held in the American system, I guess, you know, don't, don't see their attorneys for a year. Sometimes do. Um, but, you know, in, in my case, I, I'm putting this out here because I don't know where else to put it. I don't know where else to put it. And I had high hope that I had somebody working in my best interest, and now I've, I've come to realize that I don't. And the only person I have working for me, as always in life, is myself. I've always been my own best advocate, and apparently that's the case here, too. And I'm so grateful to you for giving me this platform. So grateful. Thank you, Louis. Any any t- Anytime. I mean, you know, I love you with all my heart. I know you're innocent, so... Uh, this is no so, so thank you for giving me a chance to say my piece publicly and I just hope I hope that people hear this and you know, I've look, I've always I've always had my fear of enemies, but like Winston Churchill always says, and you know, you've done something right. Um <laughs> you have enemies good, then you know you've done something right. That's all I can do. Uh so thank you for giving me this this twenty minute to get this information out here and and I really hope that somebody will hear it and um, and hopefully it will in some way give me some boost so that people will just think twice, you know, not everything keep in mind the propaganda generally this is why they tell you to keep silent as a as defendant because they want to Sway public opinion against you. Yeah. Always. It's a conspiracy of silence to destroy you and to 
ruin you publicly. And I won't have it. I just won't have it. I've been I've been mostly silent for four and a half years. And I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. I mean they, they put they put a restraining order on me when I first came in where I couldn't contact my daughter for three years. And um after three years, you know, I oh I, I sent a book to her. I sent several books on manners and hygiene and, you know, a calligraphy set. And I boom, right again, I got hit with a restraining order. I'm in jail. It's not like I can harm her. But I, you know, I sent by proxy just a few little gifts because I'm not there to speak with her about things like manners. Yeah. And, you know, safety. I wanted, I wanted to send a book on online safety and, you know, drug use. Just things that, as a bomb, I'm concerned about because I'm not there to be able to have those conversations with her because she'll be 14 soon. And they hit me with a with an online with a restraining order. I'm in custody. How much harm can I do? And by the way, there are women here. I'm housed with women who are actual murderers who are allowed to speak with their children. Think about that. Yeah. I mean, these are women who killed children, and yet they're allowed to pick up the jail phone and talk to their other kids. And yet I can't speak with mine. How much sense does that make? Doesn't that seem a little bizarre? No, it is. I mean, I don't know why they're railroading you. I mean, you must be really dangerous. (laughs) My deal is set at $2 million, which is exactly the same as a man who killed two sheriff's deputies in Los Angeles. You have one minute left. Even if I were to bail out, they said I I would have to remand my passport and be kept on an electric ankle monitor within San Bernardino County, which to me is the same as being in jail. (laughs) You know? So anyway, I love you. Thank you for this time. I appreciate you. Anytime. I I think we should end the call the the time now. I appreciate you so much. Love you. Love you too. Okay, bye. Bye. The caller has hung up. All right, that was Mercedes Carrera from uh, speaking from jail. Um, and uh, still no, still no trial. Still no trial. Uh, she's not being defended properly, and apparently she's being railroaded. Um. To me, this is just a sign of her innocence. So, but anyways, thank you for listening. And as always, from my house to your house, mahalo. And that's the end of my show. Donk. Oh, I'm going to die. 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 I'm going to